This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Robinson Crusoe, Written Anew, by James Baldwin. Chapters 7 through 11. Chapter 7. I Find a Strange Lodging Place. It was now late in the afternoon. The sun was shining in the bright sky. The storm was at an end. I began to look around me to see what kind of place I was in. Where shall I go? I asked myself. What shall I do? My clothes were still wet. I could dry them only by sitting in the sun. I had nothing to eat or drink. I had nothing about me but a knife, a pipe, and a little tobacco. How could I live on this strange shore without shelter and without food? The thought of this made me almost wild. I ran this way and that like a madman. Then I sat down and cried like a child. I never felt so lonely as at that moment. I never felt so helpless and lost. Soon I saw that night was coming on. I thought, what if there are wild beasts in the woods? They will come out in the darkness and find me here, and then how can I save myself from them? A little way from the shore I saw a tree. It stood all alone with no other trees near it. It was thick and bushy with long thorns on its branches. I walked out to look at it. To my great joy I found a spring of fresh water, bubbling out from among its roots. I knelt down and took a long drink, for I was very thirsty. Then I climbed up into the tree. The branches grew very close together. I found a place where I could rest, half sitting and half lying, with no danger of falling. With my pocket knife I cut a strong stick about two feet long. This would be my weapon if any beast should find me in the night. It was now quite dark. The only sound that I could hear was that of the waves breaking against the shore. It seemed so good to be on dry land that I forgot every danger. I was so tired that I soon fell asleep. Never have I slept more soundly. CHAPTER Eight. I VISIT THE WRECK When I awoke it was broad daylight. The sun was up. The sky was clear. The air seemed soft and mild. A fine day was beginning. It did not take me long to come down from my lodging place. I looked out toward the sea. To my great wonder, I saw that the ship was now much closer to the shore. The high tide had lifted her off the sand. It had carried her toward the land and left her on a huge rock, less than a mile away. I could see that the good ship stood upright and was firmly wedged into the rock. The waves had not broken her up, but her masts had been snapped off, and all her rigging was gone. The sea was quite smooth, and the tide was still going out. Soon... The beach was bare, and I could walk a long way out. I was now within a quarter of a mile of the ship. As I looked at her, a sad thought came to my mind. For if we had all kept on board when she stuck in the sand, we would now have been safe. But there was no use in thinking of what might have been. I waded out as far as I could and then swam for the ship. As I came near her, I saw that she was lying high out of the water. The part of the rock that was uncovered rose steep and straight into the air. There was no place for me to set my feet. I swam round the ship twice. How could I ever climb up her smooth sides? I was about to give up when I saw a small piece of rope hanging down from the deck. It reached almost to the water. How strange that I did not see it at first. I seized hold of the rope and climbed hand over hand to the deck. 
I went into the ship's cabin. I looked all through the unlucky vessel. Chapter 9 I Make Me a Raft There was a great deal of water in the ship's hold, but the cabin and the storerooms were dry. The boxes of food had not been touched by the water. I was very hungry, but I had no time to lose, so I filled my pockets with dry biscuits and ate them as I went about. There were many things on the ship. They might be very useful to me if I had them on shore, but there was no boat, and how could I carry them there? I will make me a raft, I said to myself. There were several long pieces of timber on the deck. I tied a rope to each of these, so that it would not float away. Then I dropped them one by one over the ship's side. After this I slid down my rope into the water and tied these timbers together. They formed a framework that was strong and would not sink. On top of this framework I laid all the boards I could find. I now had a very good raft. It was large enough to carry a great many things. All the time I was building it, I was planning how to load it. In the cabin there were three strong boxes, such as sailors use. These I emptied. Then I carried them out and let them down upon my raft. Of all the things on board, I would need food the most. So I filled the first chest with bread, rice, cheese, and a few pieces of meat. I found also a small bag of grain, of which I took great care. It was barley. Then I began to look around for clothing, and found enough to do for many a day. While I was getting these things together, I happened to see the carpenter's chest. It was full of tools. It was hard work to get it on the raft. I lifted and pulled. I pulled and lifted and at last I had it alongside of the other boxes. How tired I was! Chapter 10 I Carry Some Things Ashore It was now past noon, and the tide was coming in. I could not stop to rest. I have food, I have clothing, I have tools, I said to myself. What do I need next? Then I thought of the wild animals and wild men that I might meet on the shore. How shall I protect myself from them? I said. In the captain's room I found two good guns with a bag of shot and a powder horn. There were also two old swords, very rusty and dull, and a pair of big pistols. By looking around I found also three small kegs of powder. Two of these were dry but the other was wet and good for nothing. It took more than an hour to get all these safely placed on my raft. I now had quite a heavy load, and I began to wonder how I should take it to the shore. I had no oars nor any sail for my raft, but the water was smooth, the tide was flowing in, and a gentle wind was blowing toward the land. I loosed the rope that held the raft to the ship, and soon began my little voyage. The tide was now so high that the dry land was much farther away than when I came out, but the raft floated smoothly along and drew nearer and nearer to the shore. Just as I thought myself safe, I found that I was entering a strong current which carried me into a narrow bay far from my first landing place. There the raft stuck fast on an ugly sandbar, and was like to be tipped over. It was all I could do to keep the heavy boxes from slipping off into the water. But the tide was still rising. Soon the raft floated free and glided slowly along again with the current. In a short time I found that I was being carried up into a little river with high banks on each side. With a piece of plank for an oar, I pushed the raft toward the shore on my right. The water was now so shallow that I could reach the bottom. The raft floated slowly onward until it reached a little cove into which I pushed it. The water there was quite still. 
I looked around for a place to land, but the banks were steep, and if I ran one end of my raft upon the shore, the other end might sink so low as to slide all my goods into the water. The best I could do was to wait till the tide was at its highest. Then I might push a little farther inland, where the bank was somewhat lower. This I did. The tide rose higher and higher. At last, to my joy, the water reached the top of the bank. It covered a level spot of ground beyond. I waited a little longer. The water on the level space was a foot deep. The tide was beginning to flow out. With all my might, I pushed the raft into this shallow place. The tide ebbed fast. Soon the raft was left high and dry on the land. It was easy now to unload the goods and carry them to a safe place. Chapter 11 I Learn That I Am On an Island. The sun was still two hours high. I was very tired after my day's work, but I could not rest. I wanted to know what sort of place I was in. I wondered whether I was on an island or on a continent. About half a mile from the shore there was a large hill. It was steep and high and seemed to overlook all the country. I thought that if I could get to the top of that hill I might see what kind of country I was in. So I put one of the pistols in my belt and one of the guns on my shoulder. I also hung the powder horn from my neck and put a handful of small shot in my pocket. Thus armed, I set out for the big hill. There were but a few shrubs or trees in my way, and the walking was easy. In less than a quarter of an hour I was at my journey's end. The sides of the hill were not rough, but they were quite steep. Soon I was at the very top. What a grand lookout it was! North, south, east, west, the land and the sea were spread out before me. The sea, did I say? Yes, I was on an island, and the sea was all around. No other land was in sight except two small islands and some great rocks that lifted themselves out of the water. I saw that my island was not very large. Perhaps it was ten miles broad. Perhaps it was twenty. I had no good idea of distances. There was no house nor sign of life anywhere. There might be wild beasts in the woods, but I was sure that no men lived there. The thought of being alone on a desert island made me feel very sad. I should have been glad at that moment to see even the face of a savage. But I dared not stay long on the hilltop. I hurried to get back to my raft before the sun should go down. At the foot of the hill I saw a great bird sitting in a tree. I thought it to be some kind of a hawk and shot it. The sound of the gun echoed strangely among the rocks and trees. Never before had such a sound been heard there. I picked up the bird. It was no hawk. It had no sharp claws nor hooked beak. Its flesh was unfit to eat, and I threw it away. The sun had set, and it was almost dark when I got back to the inlet where my raft was lying. I did not know where to go for the night, nor where to find a resting place. But the day being gone, there was no time for thinking. I made a kind of hut with the chests and the loose boards from the raft. Then I crept inside and lay down to rest. For a little while I listened to every sound. At length I fell asleep and knew nothing more until broad daylight. The next morning. End of chapters 7 through 11 from Robinson Crusoe, written anew for children by James Baldwin. Recorded by Denny Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox, Spring 2006.